And welcome to another episode of Real Talk. I think we have a very interesting uh, show tonight for everyone. I think so too. I think so too. I realize my microphone was muted. Now, I think that this uh, film that we're going to dive into tonight is probably, in my opinion, the one with one of the hardest narratives to follow. Oh, yeah. Was, I mean, it's definitely one of those movies, if you get up for a moment without pausing it, you're going to miss something. You're lost. You are going to be lost be real quick. So the movie we're talking about is Lost Highway. So before we dive in, please go to our social media pages, which is Facebook, Spotify, and YouTube. Soon, we're going to have a TikTok up and running. Yeah. But all those, just type in the other people's show. Remember, tops. Tops. And uh, you should find many, many videos uh, of Real Talk, the other people's show, sketches, one-minute sketches, short films, past series. And currently, there is uh, two short films out. Well, one short film, two versions. Right. right. In Dreams. So, uh, Casey, ha- his vocal stylings yes. are on there. Yes. So, Movie uh, premiere. Yeah. So uh, please check that out. And I got some word that uh, a film that I'm in is going to be, there's going to be some information about it coming uh, along very soon. Nice. Yeah, you were telling us about that uh, the other day. So uh, very cool. I'm actually going to have to go over here for a moment. You're excused for the moment, Adam. Yeah, sorry about that. I did just notice um, 38% on the Oh, well, that, yeah, no, that's definitely... uh, So... Typically, everything is 100% charged or already plugged in, but I don't think, I don't even know if people would know all the stuff we do. <laughs> no, probably not. To make that show what, possible. No, again, that's why, that's why we almost need, we almost need another device over here just to record the outtakes. Yeah, yeah. Or in the hole, because it's. Because really, yeah. right before we do the show, we're sitting in here. There's usually some music playing through the headphones, but we're both working on their respective devices, trying to get everything to sound and look as good as possible. Oh, right, right. So that's the challenge. Along with last minute munchies before yeah. we, uh, tonight, Milky Way peeps. <laughs> peeps. So yeah, we're looking for sponsors. <laughs> Milky sponsors Way peeps or on the um, munchies Gatorade. We drink a lot of Gatorade, Gatorade on the show, yes. so Gatorade, if you would like to. Uh, <laughs> Jump on board. Yeah, jump too. on board with the show by all means. Yeah. So it's going to be affiliate yeah. marketing is accepted. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And we're good at it because we can, we discussed, we like a lot of things. Yeah. And uh, we're going to be honest with the consumer. So even if we don't like it, well, we'll probably eat it. So. Well, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, again. you have to, you have yeah. to. <laughs> uh, but tonight's movie is a little bit of a uh, enigma. I a little say. bit. It's uh it was a strange one. Yeah. But it ends up being pretty good because when it starts, like when I started watching it, I was like, this is slow. Yeah. This is a little slow. Very slow. You know what I mean? Like minimal dialogue, minimal... Movements, uh, really. Move, movements, music, anything. I mean, yeah. It's real just like, just a drone sound almost yeah. constantly. Yeah. Like you can imagine an air conditioner or a fan You're, running the whole time. Exactly. You're 100% correct. So that, and that's all you hear, really. Uh, the whole first part of the movie, and, and even the dialogue, nice. except um, in the um, <clears throat> when they're at the party, the mystery man, and um, what was Bill Pullman? Um, Fred. Uh, Fred. Except for the dialogue in the in the party, it's almost when there's him and his wife are speaking is almost um, in a whisper, almost. Oh like, yeah, like a talk, but very quiet. Yeah, well, and you can tell a lot of that first part of the movie is meant to be uh, just felt like without words. Mm -hmm. Because I remember when I started watching, I was like, man, the dialogue in this movie is dry as hell. I was like, it's got to get, I mean, because this is, this has got to be better than this. The writing's got to be better. This is very like. Well, when you went in, did did you realize the the running time to begin with? Uh, No, I didn't. Neither did I. No, I did not. And it's. Uh, heads up, it's it's a decent length movie, yeah. you know. And we both agreed that 
some trims could have been made easily in my opinion and in your opinion but uh yeah we'll get into that so lost highway david lynch 1997 97 and it definitely looks dated it does it actually like i started wondering if it was supposed to be like i know it came out in 97 but it looks very much set in like late 80s yeah even, almost. yeah i thought so too but uh, and, so and, i wasn't sure what exact decade, and, a, and so. several scenes like you mentioned do look heavily dated yeah you know, even without the technology that mm-hmm. but some of just the way things are shot just it, it, it was really mm-hmm. dated so this is hard to summarize but uh let's see what you think about this <laughs> an anonymous videotape <laughs> leads to murder while a gangster's girlfriend leads to a me- leads a mechanic astray i mean I guess on the surface, uh, yeah, but that in no way uh, prepares you for the movie. No, and like I had seen it before a long time ago. I remember I'd only seen it one time. I remember nothing of the movie. I didn't remember what it, the plot was or any. So right. I just went in like blind, and I wasn't in the movie into the movie ten minutes before I had to pause it and rewind it because I was what, like, "What's going on?" Like, I think I just missed something. Like, yeah, that quick. And I still wasn't sure for a while until there towards kind of the end and then our conversation right. briefly prior to the show, uh, what was going on at the start of the movie because it opens with some kind of door kind of sliding open, yeah. you know what I mean? And he's hearing the thing and he walks over to the intercom and it's whatever, the, I can't remember the character's name now. Uh, Dick Lamont is Dick dead. Dick Lamont is dead. So here's some interesting facts. Um, well, before we get to the facts, we have uh, Bill Pullman, Patricia Arquette, uh, in two roles, really. Yes. Uh, Michael Massey and Robert Blake. Um, now, those not familiar with Michael Massey, do you know Ma- Michael Massey? Uh, I recognize the name, but I couldn't remember. Now, he was the, the character context. who uh, was the, met his most gruesome death in the oh, film, with uh, the table. With the table, sure. Oh, oh Andy. Yeah. Yeah. Andy. Now, Michael Massey actually is he's no longer with us. Uh, he passed away a couple of years ago. But if you've ever watched the Brandon Lee movie called The Crow, oh, yeah. Michael Massey is Fun Boy and oh. The Crow. And oh. Michael Massey is the one who pulled the trigger to the gun that accidentally shot and killed Brandon Lee. Wow. Uh, no fault of his own, sure, really, because it was supposed to be dummy bullets. But Michael Massey went into a deep. Uh, depression and almost quit acting. He'd quit acting for two years after the Brandon I'm, Lee. I'm sure. And um, but he's he's in this as, huh. as Andy. So it's a little bit of information. Interesting tied in and when you take that into consideration with one of the other Robert Blake. Robert Blake's uh, background and stuff. Yeah, which he, I did not know prior to watching this. Until so yeah, me. so that uh, there's there's a lot of cool little facts for this movie. This is yeah. Robert Blake's last uh, movie. And Robert Blake was uh, tried uh, of killing his his wife Bonnie Lee Bagley. Now, if you don't know Robert Blake, he was in a Beretta a movie or a show in the what seventies, I yeah, guess. Yeah, it's pretty old. And he had been in some other TV shows and some movies that I had seen, but I didn't really know him. He was right. kind of before I was really you know known stuff. And uh, Tim Roth as Mr. Orange makes uh, yeah. a reference to Beretta uh, in uh, right. Reservoir Dogs. Wow. So nice tie-in. Yeah, that's kind of a, a cool little throwback. Yeah, man, I tell you what, we have mentioned that movie numerous times yeah. on this show. We're gonna have to point, die. We're gonna have to at some point. Yeah, because I've never it actually seems like Reservoir, like every other episode, almost yeah. somehow Reservoir Dogs or Tarantino it's somehow up. a connection. <laughs> so, so he, I, I, I think he was. Uh, I can't remember. I, I don't think he was. Uh, I think he was acquitted. I don't think he was found guilty. I don't. I you, oh, you might you might be right actually. But he never worked again in Hollywood. Or can't imagine. Um, and he died actually. Uh, I think March sixth of last month. Uh, so he was maybe in his. I think he was eighty seven. I think. Wow. So yeah, he is in this. Uh, the character is creepy as hell in this. Yeah, uh, in Mystery Man, he has no real real name, and I think it no. says Mystery Man in the credits. Yeah, that's what it says. Yeah. So you have. Uh, David Lynch, the director of Eraserhead, Blue Velvet, the Twin Peaks series, mm-hmm. and the Twin Peaks Walk With Me movie. Yeah, Fire Walk With Me. Which is a prequel and a sequel. That movie might be harder, more complex to follow than this one, to be honest. I would imagine. Yeah. Have you yeah. watched it? Uh, it's been a while on that and Twin Peaks. Both yeah. 
Uh, both good, but strange. Strange. Twin, Twin Peaks is strange. That and would, Mulholland Drive. It would Drive. take us like a month <laughs> to even attempt to, like, to dissect that one. Yeah, I don't even know where he began. We'd have to bring on, like, we'd have to have a whole panel of people yeah. to even dissect it. Yeah, true, true. It'd take us forever by ourselves. A panel of surgeons to dissect uh, <laughs> Twin, Twin Peaks. Peaks. Yeah, for sure. So we have the budget is $15 million. Wow. Was the budget of this? Wow. Uh, it only made three point eight million dollars back. <laughs> uh, yeah, so a low, wow, low, a low sum. So it made that back in profit. No, no. So it, it didn't it make money. Finished in the red. Yeah. However, uh, Rotten Tomatoes has it at sixty eight percent, and the audience rating is eighty seven percent. Whoa! Crazy. So much higher than I expected. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because I started wondering if. If this could be considered a cult classic, given other films that we've classified as cult classics, and I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so either. I don't think it has a big enough following. I don't either. I really don't. I think it's uh, even it's, I mean, it's obscure and it's stable. I mean, it's got it checks a lot of the boxes yeah. that it should be. Yeah. A cult, but I don't think I don't no, think so either because uh, no one. Several people have asked, "Hey, what movie?" Oh, I saw you doing Lost Highway. I've heard of it, right? But I've never watched it. I've got right. that multiple times. No, no one that I've uh, talked to has watched it. Yeah, no. And if, and again, unless unless you were really interested, like it's one of those ones that it's you have to want to watch it after, or, or really you have to give it a minute. Yeah. Because otherwise, in the first, if you're looking for a movie to catch you in the first 10, 15 minutes, this one very well is not, it, it may not. No. You know, because I was like, again, even when it started, when it starts, it looks super low budget. Yeah. Even the opening sequence with the names flying at you, and the, I was like, the road, this yeah. is way, this is low budget. And then the way that it started and the you know, music and the scenes were like, I was, while well, I was thinking about the, uh, the budget, I was like, Damn, this whole thing's taking place pretty much in and, this house, yeah. Except for the scenes of him at the club playing the saxophone, you know. Which is weird. The uh, the house at the in which Fred and his wife live is David Lynch's actual house. Really? Yeah. It's David Lynch's actual house. Interesting. So that was uh, uh, an interesting thing. Um, we talked about this or heard about it earlier. David Lynch said that he realized after a few years that the film was subconsciously inspired by the O.J. Simpson trial and the sensationalism through all that kind of stuff. Yes, yeah. Um, Bill Pullman as Fred, he's really playing the saxophone during the scenes when really? Fred plays the saxophone. Wow. Bill Pullman decided to take lessons and learn to play during that. Yeah, he's um, playing it for sure. Richard Pryor, his last yeah. role. See, I didn't know that either. And uh, I'd crazy. forgotten kind of that he minimal. was even in it. Yeah, I'd forgotten. Well, I didn't know until I, uh, when I was watching the opening credits. Yeah. And it's full of, like, p names you'll recognize. Yeah. But you may not see, you may not catch them in the movie. Yeah. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, Giovanni. Yeah, Rabisi. Yeah. He's one of my favorites. And so, I, you know, I saw his name in the credits. He didn't even have dialogue. Did he have dialogue? Uh, if he did, it was just, like, one or two well, lines. Yeah, I didn't maybe. think it was much. If no, it was super. And, and again... I didn't even catch it that it was him. Stacy realizes. I didn't catch it. She pointed him out. She's like, Giovanni Ribisi. I was like, what? I was like, oh, it is. You know, I was like, and it was super minimal role. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. wow. And then you've got, uh, you know, Richard Pryor, and then Robert Blake, mm -hmm. his, his final his role, role as well. And this the tie was. Tie into the, with the plot of this movie yeah. and Blake's tie into it and even his role, what it represents. Uh, is is super interesting, you know, and I almost wish uh, I would have known that going in because I probably would have maybe looked at it a uh, read a little deeper into it, you know. But it, you know, when it's where it's David Lynch and I was watching it, and we had half discussed this too. There's full, it's full of things uh, like symbolism, yeah, uh, you know, and even things that you might not think. I'm like, this, this has got to mean something. And then you keep waiting for it. And some things I may not have ended up tying together. It doesn't mean they're not there. Right. I mean, this is one of those ones, if you really wanted to pick it apart, uh, you could probably have a pretty good time or drive yourself crazy, one of the two, trying to, you know, pick out all the symbolism. I mean, because I was like, because it's, hey, it's David Lynch. You know, right. Right down to, we had half mentioned it, all the close-ups of Patricia Arquette's lips when she's yep. talking. When, and they're all phone calls. Yeah. She's right up on the phone and it's talking like this. You know, and it's like... And you're like, whoa, you know what? 
Well, That's see, I thought that it. also uh, the lips and the there weren't many things red in the movie. If you noticed, the one wall, the one wall, the 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 headboard of the bed, her lips in the first close-up. Yeah, uh, when she's Renee. Yeah, and uh, so I know, I, and then the blood on uh, Pete's mouth. Yeah, but it's like deep red. Bl- it's the same. Yeah. All the reds are exactly, I think, the same. Don't I you hadn't think? noticed, but I definitely see where they could be because I that, I had picked up on that with the movie, especially in the first half. Yeah, because the two halves of the movie are they're very, they're distinctly different. Yeah, in movies. tone and everything. Yeah, 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 completely. It's almost like you said two different movies. Yeah, and it, we mentioned this on the ride over. It put me in mind a lot of uh, Jacob's Ladder mm-hmm. at moments, which was the same kind of thing. It was almost became like these two separate movies uh, that tied themselves back together. Yeah. And actually, it's very similar now that I think about what the movie represents, like we were discussing on the way over. Uh, it, it's almost, it's very similar to Jacob's Ladder. Yeah. Where it's all, it's playing out, but it's really the, like his mental, somebody, yeah. you know, projection of, of whatever. And yeah, no, super crazy. It, it's good. good. Yeah. It, it turned out to be really good. It keeps you guessing. Yeah. And this is the If movie you can make it through the first half, you'll it'll capture your yeah. interest in the second half. Yeah, I think so too. And the first half is about it's about forty four minutes long. Yeah, I mean it's a good stretch. Of yeah, just like you're trying to figure stuff out. And it's full. It's it's eerie, creepy in a way because again, there's not eerie, a lot of dialogue. Creepy. It's slow paced, and you can feel the tension. Yeah, when you're watching it, and the, even the scenes are real, like bleak. There's not a lot of stuff hanging on the wall. No, it's bare. Solid colors, real bare. You know, minimalistic, like big time. Even outside, like, there was just those uh, no, no, like inviting things. It was just like yeah. plain, plain white house. Yeah, super, you know? just like generic, kind of in a way. Bare, yeah, you know? again, low budget uh, when it started, mm-hmm. and uh, but it's it's got some interesting stuff. And then once once there's the scene, you know. Well, we hadn't half set up, you know, the movie. So, like, kind of what's happening in the movie. Right. We'll go ahead and jump right into the plot and the structure. Yeah. So, basically, what's happening is Bill Pullman's character in the movie opens with him, I guess, hearing some sounds and stuff. He goes and listens to at the uh, intercom for basically his front door and hears that Dick, uh, Dick Lamont's dead. Dick Lamont is Which, dead. Which, before we jump in, what inspired that was David Lynch said he got a ring on his intercom telling him Dick Lamont is dead. Whoa. That's why that's in the movie. Whoa, weird. When I read that, that's I was like, wow. That's a big tie-in. Yeah, wow. That's yeah. interesting. Mm-hmm. So it makes me wonder, like, is there, who, who the hell is like, Dick yeah, Lamont? Like, yeah, and what are, the, what, mm. you know, and that's what he said. Who, like, who is this and why is he yeah. dead? Why, why, you know. Yeah, weird. So that was and kind so, of a weird inspiration for what kind of started this. Yeah, see, this movie's full of that kind of stuff. And again, it, as we get through this plot, the Robert Blake thing is going to sound even crazier yeah. that he's even in the movie, yeah. in the role that he's in. And so uh, Fred, uh, Bill Pullman's character, Fred, uh, here's this thing. He starts looking, he's looking out the window. He doesn't see anybody. He goes outside, finds um, an envelope or uh, you know, a brown you know, envelope with a VHS tape in it. Yep. Because we're old school. This is VHS tapes. A big tape. A big, yeah, like old school VHS. You can still find them at Goodwill. I'm yeah. pretty sure. And you so, can. <laughs> on eBay, maybe, like, get them all for $5. But, and so they go in, uh, him and Patricia Arquette, and they watch it, and it's a video of the front of their house. And that's it. And then it goes yep. back to, to static. You know, static. Uh, movie goes on, you still pick up on this tension. And this tension that evolved, that exists with Bill Pullman and the wife, you can tell uh, he um, he's got in his head that the wife uh, is cheating on him, is having an affair right. with Michael Massey's character. Is kind of what I pick up on. Yeah, uh, at the party. Yes, you know. And then you get the feeling in the first of several sex scenes in the movie um, that he's not able to satisfy her. She looks disinterested. Right. Um, you know, and the way the scene ends and just like his exasperation, you start to wonder, uh, did he climax or not even? Cause then she's, she pats him on the back and it's like, it's, it's okay. okay. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. And it's like, Oh geez. You know, like I'm not sure what just happened there, but, and cause then, you see the, disp- you don't even, 
that scene even plays it, out really. Yeah, is it crazy. like you you see their faces, but neither face looks interested. No, yeah, like, but it's not a, it's not, it's even like, just not even present with one another. No, almost. and it's weird because, it, but Detached. the music, yeah, but the music would suggest a lovemaking scene. Like yeah. you can almost pick up that vibe, but the visuals of it, other than just your basic human, you know, form, right, having sex, it's not. Yeah, there's you don't there's no passion there. No. It's very kind of disconnected. Yeah. Um and so that happens and he rolls over, kind of falls asleep or whatever, and he wakes up to go tell Patricia Arquette he has his dream. And that's when we get our first glimpse of, of the mystery, mystery man. man. Yeah. Um and then he wakes up, goes out. No, 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 she gets the second tape, I think. Yes, she and does. She, she goes out, same kind of thing, gets the mail and another videotape. They watch it, and this time it's the front of the house, same as the first one, static. Then it cuts to inside their house, goes through to them in in their bed asleep. Yep. And that's when they call the police. Correct, and that didn't come into it. Um, and then it kind of cuts to the party scene right. at Andy's place. Well, see, I thought a key scene when the cops show up, he says a... a, a they ask, you know, mm, do yeah. you like videotapes? Yeah, I see where you're going with it. And then he's like, uh, no. He says something to the effect, um, I like to remember the th- I like to remember the things the the way I like to remember them, not yes. the way they necessarily happen. happened. Yes. Something along those lines. Yeah, and that does you're right. That becomes that's a key yeah. line yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the movie. And that was also a phrase at the time uh that David Lynch really felt about videotapes uh that's I can, why i, I didn't kind of see that so because when this around this so what time did when did uh sex lies and videotape come out that was uh that was 19 made nine made 90 came out in 91 all right so way earlier than this. yeah which but, i actually thought about that earlier today that might be one to dive into later down yeah, the road old james spader yeah that's an old one yeah but yeah because this is the era of videotapes and the you know, vhs cameras when they that stuff was all coming into the, the home it was like normal yeah well kind of normal i guess but uh they were so hard to edit on i had one <laughs> and i oh i saved up to, to purchase that video yeah that came quarter and it was the, it was about this big rca yeah and uh it had some functions that i wanted because i tested it out because you could test it at walmart or you, there was a display yeah know, with that little uh piece on it where you couldn't run off with it that little sure. plastic piece yeah so i would test it out and you could do like credits and everything that thing was it was cool yeah for the time so difficult to edit no like to try to get the uh the the letters like centered each time i would make something it would be like all centered a little bit (laughs) no doubt it was like it only had like you know you could change the font to like red or color to like red black uh white yeah maybe basic yeah just five i think five basic colors yeah 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 yeah. um but it was fun yeah it, yeah, was, it, it was, was fun. Cra- though. It was crazy, and that's the way this video looks that you see. They're watching it's grainy, grainy, yeah. black and white looking. Um, and I watched it on DVD. Oh wow! <laughs> did you? I guess you watch on 10, 1080? Uh Yeah, whatever. It or maybe even seven twenty, whatever you in, find in it on. Room, yeah. So yeah, with some of the grainy scenes were really grainy. Yeah, but I mean, it still has. And I hadn't thought about it till now, but in that first run of the movie. A lot of those, well, it seems like they're all black and white. Like, the front of the house is black and yeah. white. I want to say that the second video in the bedroom is black and white. I think it is, too. But the third one is very much in color. Yeah. It's, it's the only one it seems like it's in color. But those black and white videos in the beginning stand in contrast almost to the, I mean, because there's bold colors. I mean, it's real bland, stark. Yeah. Uh, you know, visually. But the colors are, they're solid colors. You right. Know? I mean, um, but yeah, that third one I hadn't thought about till now was the only one there that was in color. Yeah. And so on the third one, so, you know, they've gotten the two videos now we've seen it and they go to this party and that's where we really get introduced to the mystery man is at this party at Michael Massey's place, Andy's place. And I'm not going to necessarily just, you know, spoiler how all that goes out down, but, uh, they go home, they're weirded out. Bill Pullman's character is weirded out because it could be somebody in the house. And there's this scene where he goes into the, uh, just into these shadows. And he just kind of disappears into the shadows. Yeah. 
Yeah, I remember it's that. Like, Whoa, and it's all dark. Interesting. Hello? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> we seem to have gotten our first caller. Yeah, it could that have been. Strange. I, I don't know how they <laughs> it was, got It was the mystery man. Them? Oh, yeah, see, which is weird. So maybe, okay, calling back. See, the mystery man in this scene has Bill Pullman call him, the mystery man. The mystery man's in Bill Pullman's house. Right. And mystery man hands Bill Pullman's phone to call him in his house. And it's all very strange. This is why they're creeped out and they go back looking for it. Bill Pullman goes into the shadows. And it's one of it's one of the cooler scenes of the movie, especially the first half, where Bill Pullman's in the shadows. And then you see this scene where he's like, he's like in front of the mirror, you know, and you're like, oh, something's going down here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Something's going down. And then it's the really cool shot of the two shadows going across the wall. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, because prior to that, Patricia Arquette's character is, like, looking for him. And uh, and then you see these two shadows and this and that. And then it cuts to the morning, you know, like the next day. Yeah. And he finds that third tape, which shows you that he has apparently uh, murdered his wife. And the, the very vibrant color in that scene is red. A red, bright red. Yeah, the same again, red. All those, all three of the weird phones still ringing. I, we're, uh, we're popular, but we're not taking calls tonight. Yes, we are not. This is not live on the radio right now. This is just you guys on Facebook. And this lollipop brought to you by Dumb yeah. <laughs> Dones Cream Soda. And uh, this Cherry Coke brought to you by uh, this Minister Cherry, cherry Coke. Coke, yes. <laughs> But, uh, and so, yeah. And so at that point, everything shifts. Like the whole movie shifts completely at that point. Because then it rapidly moves to, he, this video, he's watching this VHS tape of him in bed with his murdered wife. He's right. Watching, he has no recollection. No of memory. And the next thing you know, he's coming down the steps, he's been put on trial, he's in on death row. Yeah. Waiting to be executed. Yeah, so it's pretty much just jump cuts to these. You hear some voiceover. Yeah. You know, the jury, he's guilty. And then he's in he's in jail. He's in jail. He's he's bad himself. headaches. Yep. Uh, does he nosebleeds? Is he having or just headaches? It seems like it was just headaches. Okay. But probably just headaches. Nosebleeds then. play in later in the later in the movie for sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. I couldn't remember if um if yeah. he had them there. But uh, so th- at that point you're about 44, 45 minutes in, mm-hmm. and you're not expecting anything that would happen next at all. I didn't. I most certainly did not. And uh, it's cool because when he's in jail is one of my favorite parts of the movie because it has a, a cameo of uh, of Henry La- uh, Henry Rollins, which is is kind of cool, you know. And you got Henry Rollins, you know, you're thinking Black Flag and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, here he is playing a, a death row prison guard. <laughs> well, here's the interesting <laughs> uh, cut, like, well, you know. Here's the interesting yeah, thing about Rollins, Henry, yeah. Henry Rollins. No, I don't know. I'm sure now it's not like this, but I know for at least the first. 10 years of his acting career he said if his schedule allowed it he would take every single role that he was offered wow he's now, trying for, to get yeah. i forgot his exact reasoning but it was of sound reason and i wouldn't i wouldn't i think he was like if these opportunities are coming to them i'm going to take on every single one of them yeah you know i mean he's um, been a good handful of movies i can't no, i can't think of any off the top of my head i can see like his character, but I can't, can't. I can't think of one. Um, he is a uh, like a dispatch uh, police officer or something like that in a Charlie Sheen, um, Christy Swanson movie called The Chase. Oh, I remember The Chase. He is. Uh, he's in another series that I've seen. Um, I've not seen it, but I've seen when I've scrolled through on Netflix. Yeah. And it shows like his back with like maybe red wings on it. Yeah. Um, I've seen him in a few things. Obviously, we we saw him in this. Yeah. Uh, but um, I, I'm going blank as well, to be honest. Well, apparently, he's in Johnny Mnemonic, Lost Highway, Beast, uh, Swan Boy, Masters of the Universe. Uh, yeah, see, I don't even recognize some of these movies. 
I guess that's why it takes everything. Yeah, right. Z Nation. I I actually think I remember seeing him in that one. Okay. I didn't watch the whole series. I just watched a little bit. Right. I didn't like zombie. I don't know for whatever reason watching zombies. Right. So he has been in quite a quite a few things. Yeah, I think he's. um, I think he's actually in Demolition Man. Oh, maybe with uh, Sandra Bullock, Rob Schneider's in that. Stallone, obviously. Oh, El King's Um, dad. You've got. Wesley Snipes in it. You've got also uh <laughs> you've got uh what's the comic? Uh he's the fast talking comic. He he's he, he had a like a run in the nineties. And he was on the uh Rescue Me show, Dennis Leary. Oh right? Dennis Leary. Yeah, because he had that yeah. little run. Yeah, I liked him for a little bit and he got a little I don't know, I remember he had that song, I'm an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. He's good as a villain in a movie called um I've I've got the movie on DVD. But it's a movie that's got like Stephen Dorff in it. It's got um Stephen Dorff's pretty good. I kind of forgot about him. It's got him. It's got um I'm trying to think. Dennis Lear is the bad guy. Cuba Gooding Jr's in it. Oh, and uh, it's a movie where these guys uh, they're going to a boxing match. This is like in the early 90s. Yeah. They they pull they're in like a RV and they pull off on this bad side of town because they're trying to beat the traffic to get to the boxing match. Yeah, and then they break down and then they kind of witness uh, you know Dennis Lear's gang shoot someone and they're ah. trying to you know it's called uh, Judgment Night. Judgment Night. Yeah, I want to say he was in wasn't he in one where they like like robbing a house or something. I want to say he's a, he's in one where he kidnaps, uh, or maybe it's kidnapping. Yeah, 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 like a, mar- a family. Or, yeah, it's it's Kevin Spacey's the guy, is the the husband of uh, who he kidnaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's called the ref. The ref. That on the, is on the front is. of the on the front of the main yep. case, it was Dennis Leary, and then Kevin Spacey and the lady, they were tied to a chair. Wow. Or at least Kevin yeah. Spacey was. Yes, 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 yes. But I've never seen it though. I just remember really? reading about. See, I remember. It. I re- I remember watching it, but I don't. I See, don't I'm, I'm able to retain. I guess a lot of it's like incredible. I, I read a lot. I of feel a contest movies. coming up, folks. <laughs> oh yeah. Speaking of the contest, really quick, we might need another round. Did anybody get the last one? They did get the last one. They did it in. Let me see here. They sent me a picture. Okay. To recap, the last contest, which was actually the first contest, was uh, the Kevin Bacon game basically with Adam. So we were connecting Adam to Kevin Bacon in the least number of steps possible. Uh, We gave out the first step of uh, Andy Dick. So uh, Adam to Andy Dick and then from that point to Kevin Bacon. So So we have to we we pretty much have to judge you and I have to judge if this counts. Okay. So they said they wanted us to connect me to Kevin Bacon. Sure. They did it a very u- unique way. They sent me a picture of Guitar One magazine, stars and guitars, and on the cover is Andy Dick and Kevin Bacon. Oh, oh <laughs> shit. Wow. Um, I mean... <laughs> so I think I'm going to have to give it to them. I You almost have to because... I mean, when would that ever happen like that again? Uh, yeah, I don't. <laughs> because Andy Dick is, is really not, a random celebrity. No, that's. I'm surprised. I did not expect that. It's from uh, Guitar One magazine, December 2002. Stars and guitars. Wow. So yeah, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna cash up them the five dollars. Yeah. Okay. That's I, I, well I, done on that. That's worth the five yeah. bucks. Not exactly what I. Yeah, had, I was had gonna thought. say if we do a Kevin Bacon with my parameters on it. But that one was. But okay, unique. okay, that no, that's good. I have to give it to you on that. I did not. What in the hell are the chances? None of Andy Dick and Kevin. I mean, <laughs> on a cover <laughs> of Guitar World, <laughs> like of all things. I mean, <laughs> it's the most random thing. This so, is the other people's show yeah. for sure, because yeah. that is some randomness. For so sure. yeah, they're gonna they're gonna get the the prize. That's great. <laughs> And what's fantastic is we haven't even got to the second half of the movie, I guess. Yeah, we've not even got to the second qu- the second uh, point. <laughs> that's how we're, we're, 30, we're like thirty four minutes into well, the show. Well, that's why I noticed the time. I was like, we haven't even got to the second half of the movie yet. So, what about the characters? 
Um, they're all look, they're they're pretty good. Again, in the, the beginning, dry as hell. Yeah. Well, you know, they're all pretty good. I like that the second. I like the second half of the movie better than the first half, though. I don't know if it would have been as good without the first half right. because it wouldn't have had the what the f- is going on. Yeah, and it would have that without a contrast. You know? Oh yeah, drastic because like everything about the movie ch- just changes. It changes the vibe, changes the dialogue, the changes, colors, the colors. There's more music, more There's setting. More, you're more, yeah, just a lot more, more activity. You know, more activity going on. Yeah, a lot more locations. Uh, very, very different. Because the first one, ba- the first part of the movie basically just takes part place in the in the, in the house, and then that party, doesn't it? That's it. And that, I that's mean, that's much. it. Yeah. Now, early on, you do see a. Um, it's it's in I think within like the first fifteen minutes, a flash of a cabin burning quickly. Do you remember yes. seeing that? Yes. It's brief, but yep. and and you wonder at the moment, what, that doesn't make any sense. Right, it makes no sense. And it doesn't one hundred percent make sense now, but we kind of understand it a little bit more, mm-hmm. and and they will too as they watch it. Yeah, yeah. This is one of those movies like, I want to talk about it deeper without giving too much away. Yeah. Because if we tell you, you know, what we kind of determine, you know, what everything is representing, it might take away from the movie. Yeah, and bit. it might hinder the viewer from maybe they're getting something that we're not. But if we they hear, well, here's what they think, we're kind right. of guiding Yeah, 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 it. too much suggestive. Yeah, like uh, we want you to get from A to Z on your own. Right. We'll give you little points, you know, we'll give you like F and G and maybe another letter. Yeah. But you find your own point, you know, yeah, your own and, way through. And it leaves itself open to a lot of imper- interpretation. Like, I still had a lot of questions until that little 10 minute ride over here yeah. to do the show, and we pieced a lot of stuff together. Yeah. And it made yeah. a lot, it really came together really quick, more right? coherently. Oh, yeah. And then, and then a lot of stuff made more sense. And we've dropped some hints. When you go do watch it, as far as how the story is playing out with the with the Jacob's Ladder uh, reference, and, and there's a lot of similarities I found. Mm-hmm. Not not just, I mean, in there's just a lot of similarities. Yeah. I mean, they seem like similar. We cut from the same cloth, definitely, definitely of the so, same vein. I of would say. the same vein, and so that can kind of maybe help you uh, if you watch it, kind of. If you've seen Jacob's Ladder or you watched the Jacob's Ladder episode, yeah, or if you want to rewatch the Jacob's Ladder episode, it's on YouTube and Spotify by all means. Go yeah, and, check and it you out. can go in there and rewatch it and go watch uh, rewatch uh, Jacob's Ladder. I rewatched it again uh, last week. No, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's and, a great uh, one, but that yeah. can kind of give you a clue to follow this one a little yeah, bit. Yeah, definitely. Because um, again, there were things I did not piece together because right up until the end of it, I was like, what in the hell just happened? Like, I am still kind of confused. Like, I was pretty sure. Yeah. Like, because there are things I knew, like, like when the mystery man came into the, the picture and that kind of played it out. And some, it sets up the scenes like, like Fred walking into the dark shadows and disappearing. You know, and it had that vibe of, yeah. uh, he's getting, he's like going dark in his head. Here, yeah. You know what I mean, because you can he's tell. going deep and nefarious right here. Yes. Cause the first whole first half of the movie is setting up Fred's, um, lack of just his inadequacies, his insecurities, yeah. his, um, uh, paranoia and fears of the wife, uh, cheating on him, not being able to satisfy her and all of that. I mean, the whole first half just sets that up, uh, and he kills her. Yeah, he kills her. And I or, also think he, you know, he, I mean? you know he, for the he, whole thing, he ends up killing her. You know. Well, he also seems like you know he. She's like you know. Do you mind if I don't go to yes. your to your you know the, the club with you? And he's. It seems like because he has an extended, I guess a solo. Yeah. Um, and he goes on and on like he is sweating because I mean he's yeah. like a you know like you would imagine a rock star up there yeah playing the guitar the drummer yeah the drummer yeah, the drummer. Like, yeah and that's what he's nuts. doing as the saxophone player and uh I think he's trying to you know all that the only outlet he seems to have is up on stage yeah 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 and he seems to be I mean popular he's making a living that yeah way. I yeah mean, and he has you know crowd uh you know fans and stuff yeah in a nice house and stuff like that mm-hmm. yeah because you never know what she does no it, other no than just be socialite mm-hmm. basically is kind of the feeling you get 
Yeah, a dark headed, a black headed social line. Yeah, dark. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, what about? Did you say you had any particular characters that stood out? Now, I will say, I thought, you know, I did think that I was going to play his uh, little theme music here. I thought that Mr. Eddie was, I think he was miscast. I think he was miscast. Yeah, it looked like a couple of people to me. There, at one point, I was like, that could have been De Niro. Yeah. And then it, and then uh, it put me in mind too of. Uh, I want to say maybe it's James Con. I mentioned James Con yeah. a couple of weeks ago in that one movie that I talked to you about. It was actually James Wood. Yeah, James Con. It kind of puts me in mind of him a little bit too. Uh, because I, I see, I thought Mr. Eddie for him, Mr. Eddie is kind of like this. I would you would assume at first kind of like this mafia guy or mobster or gangster, gangster kind of guy. Kinda. But there was a few things, and these are just petty little things. There's a few little things. Would you really be driving yourself around, though, when you no, get in the backseat? Yeah. I no. thought that, because he wouldn't pull into the garage. No. Not really? I wouldn't think so. No, no. Yeah, again. You know? And it was even... Those gangster parts weren't agreed, weren't very believable. No. From this particular actor. I mean, some of it worked, but... I, and yeah. well, you had mentioned earlier, I think in the either before the scene, before the show, or at the beginning of the show, how the the car car chase scene seemed dated or um, didn't almost you? unneeded. Like we had discussed that on the uh, ride over. Unneed. Okay. On, it was unneeded. one of those things that could have been trimmed down because it's like it didn't seem like it served any purpose other than to like try and make the viewer realize that this guy is supposed to be a badass. Yeah, he's not a he's not a he's good a bad guy. guy. Yeah, yeah, he's rough. He, he'll kill you. Or you know. Well, the way the way the guy that the the actor, I think his name is like Robert Lagella or something like that, something yes. like that. No, he's mainly Logia. That's what it is. Logia. I think that's what it is. Okay, he's mainly in my mind known uh, as the boss in Big. That dances, oh, dances right. on the piano. Yes. With the keyboard piano with Tom Hanks. Yes. That's what I mainly know him from. I knew I recognized him from something, and that's probably that. Well, he had he had auditioned for Dennis Hopper's part in Blue Velvet, mm. and he was uh, so angry. Um, well, he'd put so, he'd put so much into it that David Lynch didn't had didn't have the nerve or didn't have the heart to tell him, "You don't need to audition. We've already cast the part." After he'd waited uh, all day, right? But he said he would give him a part later on. But he wanted to use that intensity that he because he was upset because he'd waited all day to audition. Yeah. For this part as Mr. Eddie, which he does unleash on this unexpected, um, I guess uh, the guy has what? Motorist. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he, I mean, he's, I, I just didn't, I didn't care for the whole scene. No, well, I, I, I thought it was being set up for more than what it ended up being. Which was nothing really, just nothing to show. Nothing really, just. Yeah, they could have went about that, you know, wrote a different, um, a different scene. Yeah, and at that point I was still trying to figure out the movie. A little bit so i expected yeah the person in that car coming up behind him swerving to be like the mystery man or something be more meaningful way more meaningful and it's than just it was. A, uh just a motorist that <laughs> mr uh eddie beats the crap out of well yeah i counted it he actually only hits him three times and then oh, he kicks yeah. him once ah uh, because uh, I, I i do remember watching that scene before thinking he beat the S out of him. Yeah. But it wasn't as, as uh, violent as I thought it was. No, and like messes up the front of his car. And I want to say in the, the scene that follows that, when they're getting back to the garage to drop Pete off, the front of that Mercedes looks like undamaged. So that's probably a goof then. Uh, yeah, it seems like it was goof because he's like, you know, rear ends that yeah. one car and stuff, and then they pull in. And it looks like it's good. Fine. Co good catch. Yeah, side. not not my catch. That was uh, that was my girl's catch. Okay, well, <laughs> so she caught that. She caught Giovanni Rabisi. Two good catches, right I there. I mean, yeah, good eyes. Babe. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Because both of those. Now the Giovanni thing. After you mentioned it, I think back and I can remember, but I didn't. I didn't recognize him yeah, at the time. Yeah, in that scene, it's one of Pete's friends, one of the first ones that comes in. Yep. And so what's happened at this point in the movie, to bring you up to speed, Bill Pullman has gone to jail, death row, for uh, killing his wife. Yep. And they have video 
of him doing a video of him doing it. Yeah. He just uh, he doesn't well, not, remember anything. Well, not well. I'll tell you what. It's not video of him doing it. It's video of it after the fact. So he's in bed. She's dead. He's covered in blood. Right. But there's never the actual crime video, being committed. Uh, you know, that's being on. committed. Yeah. yeah. It's just the the after of it. And so one night he's having these headaches. Blue light over the cell, and then it cuts to the next morning. Guard goes, you know, doing his rounds, and he's like, "Oh, oh. Bill Pullman." is not in the cell anymore nope. he has been replaced with pete's character who is about what 15 years younger maybe at least i was gonna say 20 but 15, so 20, 15 to 20 probably yeah so like yeah young young well, i don't even think pete is really uh is is he even 20 years older in the movie probably I, not no he's probably pretty 18 19 yeah he's young for sure so I mean, well, he still lives at home right you know what i mean so right. he's not uh but he's out of school because you don't there's nothing that shows him in school right not that that would mean anything, because maybe, but uh, yeah. So at that point, the movie shifts completely, and we pick up on Pete's character. And we kind of start following him. And Bill Pullman has just disappeared. Nope. From we the movie. Yeah, yeah. Not, well, for a while. You don't see him for quite some time. Yeah. Uh, and you're following Pete's story, and Pete's character and uh, is very different. And again, like I said, at this point, the characters are different. The vibe's different. The pace of the movie's different. The music is different. The scenery, like everything is different. Yeah. And uh, you've got faster music. You've got bright lights. You've yes. got multiple scenes. Big way, contrast. Way more characters. Yes, true. Yeah. Way more characters and just way more activity. And uh, of course, as you realize as the movie goes, or if you piece it together by the end. Uh, you, you see the reasons for this contrast right. and you realize what it is. But you also get reintroduced to Patricia Arquette in the second half of the movie, but she is Alice. She is no longer Renee, and she is a blonde. Com completely different um, uh, character, you would think. Yeah. You're, you're led to believe for a while. Yeah. And maybe she is. It's it's up to you. But yeah, it is very, again, there's room for some interpretation. Yeah. Even This though, is just our take on it. Yeah, and so blonde and she is connected to mr eddie mr eddie uh and then all these other people and so she ends up uh i want to say seducing yeah uh for sure. lack of a better way to put it pete's character yep and creates you know they start this fling behind mr eddie's back but he kind of you know mr eddie is tied to this garage where you know so there's some things there and so it's all very risky behavior, and you realize that uh, Pete's character is young. He, again, stark contrast to uh, Fred's character. So kind he's of very almost, sexually uh, active. He's, you know, he's, what would you? I almost got him as like a James Deanish, very James Deanish kind of. Well, you know? yeah, and it's even got the because even then, like I wondered when I was watching, I was like, it felt like like a time warp kind of thing. Like we, I started wondering when i was watching it i was like is this supposed to be like a younger uh fred right but i was like the name's p you know? right especially some of the stuff the same kind of names were popping up and Cause it Pete looked, looked like, more like he was from a different time yeah, like 50s he had yeah. the leather jacket Even almost his, like the greaser kind of look yeah. in a way you know what i mean like the outsiders or something yeah and like with like with uh, his his friends kind of look like that too yeah yeah sure enough so i was like huh it seems like we had gone back in time and the second half of the movie, too, is where we get introduced to Gary Busey's character, who plays not a big role, but I tell you what, one of the best acting scenes, I think, in the movie when he's trying to tell, it's further in the movie, I'm, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, where he, he's trying to t tell uh, Pete's character kind of what happened. Yeah. You, know, you show back up at the house with this guy we'd never seen before, and the chick, and he just you could see just this look of just like despair kind of mixed with horror sadness kind of come over me never really do find out no what exactly happened. exactly what happened no. gary Busey's a little bit underrated i know a lot of people you know he's i guess uh you know done over the years yeah he's, he's done less serious things but for a while even in the late 80s and 90s gary Busey had a little run there yeah, good stuff yeah I mean, I mean again small role in this one i mean but the acting job was great yeah. He's got a small role in um, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Oh, uh, yeah. And then he's uh, Predator 2. Yeah, yeah. He's also uh, Point Break. Yeah, I got Point 
He's Great. also Mr. Joshua and Lethal Weapon. Wow, yeah. So he's had, you know. Yeah, he's a good run before um, he got all, like, whatever. I yeah. Mean, well, before he ended up on the same kind of thing happened to him. I was to so many people yeah. in Hollywood anyway. So, I mean, really, who are we to judge? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're judging them because yeah. we can sit back and see them on the TV to yeah. judge them. And if know? we were in that position, we would probably do the same thing. <laughs> probably, you know. Yeah, well, if you're, yeah, it's a good chance that if you're, do, if you're, if you're living middle class poor and you end up in the same place, if you were rich, yeah, yeah it's probably, you're probably going to be dead. <laughs> There's a good chance. Well, not necessarily, but. I mean, yeah, the money's not going to keep you from doing, yeah. you know, addictive behavior or something. Exactly. <laughs> so, Mr. Busey. Oh, Gary Busey did, back in the mid-2000s, had a uh, reality television show. Whoa. From one season on Comedy Central. Wow. Called I'm with Busey. I'm with Busey. Yep. Wow, he seems like he could have been on that one that VH1 had with uh, his reality show where they had all the, like, like the surreal life yeah something. the surreal life yeah he, he, i think he was i don't know if he was on that but he was on something like he that could as well have totally have been in that yeah and uh whew, gary Busey. yeah crazy if if i could somehow you, gary if, if if gary Busey <laughs> has a twitter i'll tweet him out yeah i know I like call, call this show may 5th which yeah. is what we're shooting for gary Busey. we'd love to talk to you yeah we would love to talk to you so uh but yeah that was really my only um big big things with the characters as i not that not that that guy did a bad job um as mr eddie but i think they could have just cast the yeah. the gangsters because at, at one point when when uh mr eddie waves the guy out the window yeah then his henchmen in the back seat both put on their seat belts at the same time mm -hmm. And then Pete's like looking around, not really knowing what's going on. Yeah. And uh, and then he, you know, he proceeds to ram the guy and get out and beat the guy's, you know, beats his ass. But man, there's none. None of it seems like really stand out. You know, like yeah, I, I, I again the one that Gary Busey's that scene that yeah. was, was one of the best acting jobs in the movie. Now the rest of it is decent. But they're kind of, you know, even Patricia Arquette's kind of like. A couple uh, times, her 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 reactions, right before he, um, I guess he's starting to uh, go into his little not a hallucination, but his little mental mental break. Yeah, the, uh, near the like after the, uh, the who was it? Psychogenic. And, yeah. Fugue. Yeah. Or whatever it was called. Yes. Yeah. So when he and then when he, he um looks at the picture and sees both of her mm -hmm. and he's like in Andy's house. Yeah, which one are you? And she points and she's like, This one. But her That's me. Uh, yeah, that's me. The blonde, because there's the dark headed Renee. Yeah. The, the blonde headed. Now some of her acting during those scenes were was a little uh I thought a little off. Yeah. But I in in this um I never really knew Patricia Arquette was like fit like that though, no. Well, and you gotta think this is this is a younger Patricia Arquette. Yeah. So the last thing I can remember seeing her in actually was a TV series called Medium. Oh, Medium! I forgot about Medium. No, but I want to say she was in one. It was like CSI Cyber. Something. She was. Yep, and I you're right. Say she was the head of that. Yeah, I've never seen it, Medium. but and that was it. But yeah, so this was back in the '90s. But yeah, a lot of lot of uh, topless Patricia Arquette in this movie. And backside nudity also as she's yes. walking into the the cabin. Oh, yeah, lots of it. And she said, um, which that's all he her. And she said, you know, um, she normally wouldn't do that kind of thing. Yeah. And there was, a, you know, at least amount of people that could be on set that needed to be. Yeah. You know, and I don't think there were more than you know a handful of people on set, which I couldn't blame her. But I, I think you mentioned earlier, I, she, I think she did get a little bump. I would imagine and, that's because I was you know, thinking. Yeah, I was thinking when I was watching. I was like, she had, she probably got paid. Pretty well, Hall, Halle Berry, she did a topless scene in Sh Swordfish, uh, a John Travolta, Hugh Jackman yeah. movie called Swordfish. Yeah, and she got an extra five hundred thousand dollars. Wow, for that scene. Well, she did a topless scene in Monsters Ball. Too, True, with Billy Bob. With Billy Bob, probably got paid pretty decent for that. Too. Yep. I forgot about this yep. where she's coming up out of that ocean. I remember that. Well, no, in uh, or, that, uh, that's in James Bond when she's oh, coming James out of the Bond. ocean. Yes, yes. But no. in Swordfish, Swordfish, she has a newspaper, and then Hugh Jackman's character oh, walks out right. and she just puts those. Yes, 
And it, that's right. It that's just right. it caught me by surprise. No, you're not expecting it. No, because you're like, this is Halle Berry. Yeah, and there it was. Yep. But she got an extra five hundred million. So five hundred million. I mean, for, five hundred thousand. Sorry. Either way, <laughs> she got an extra five. So half a million. Half a million for so, yeah, ten seconds. Going topless in the movie. I'll go topless for half a mil. Sure. <laughs> would you? <laughs> yep. Totally would. I, totally we would. we would do it for a couple thousand. Yeah. Far less. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's funny. So, do you but, have a favorite scene or a least favorite scene? Um, I don't need, I, I I don't know that I have a favorite scene. There's a handful of scenes that I thought sent was a real good uh, for foretelling of what was to come. Like right. the scene of them of, of Fred walking in the shadow right before this big shift in the movie and the scene where you see the two shadows on the wall you don't see any people right you just it's just a scene in the living room or whatever the wall and you just see two shadows going across it and so in my head i'm thinking well that's fred that's fred and the mystery man like it's the shadows that are going on there um as far as favorite scenes i mean i don't really know i really like the scene with with it had a lot of good moments little moments yeah um it was one of those movies where um there's a good handful of sex scenes in it. Um, only a handful of them are any real length of time. Right. Uh, but for the most part, like sometimes I feel like sex scenes are thrown into a movie just to have a sex scene in the movie. Yeah. Like it doesn't really propel the story. No, it doesn't move in any forward. way, shape, or form. But this one, you kind of—I didn't really feel that way with this because you almost realize it. That's kind of part of the point. You know? Yeah. The movie, the two halves of the movie are the stark contrast between the two characters. Yeah. You know, you got Fred's character who is insecure. He's inadequate in bed and doubtful, all these things and doubtful terrible, and paranoid. all this stuff. And then you have Pete who is sexually active. Women are attracted to confidence. You know, confidence and all these things. He's living the dangerous life. Yeah. He's sleeping with the gangster boss's woman and like all this stuff. You yeah. Know? And so it. It, it kind of almost served its purpose, you know what I mean? Right up until the last one, which uh, it was a little, I mean, whatever. You did, having sex in, in the headlights of a, during a sandstorm seems <laughs> kind of extreme in a way, yeah. but to each their own. I'm, I'm not going to say that if I ever found myself in that place. I, I don't know. I'm not going to judge right. that. But there's a car there. I'm just saying, yes. you get in the car, <laughs> sandstorm out yeah. here. That seems abrasive to me, <laughs> given nudity. Like, yeah. I don't know if you'd really want but but anyway, but the scene served a purpose yeah. because the end of that sex scene was uh, pretty climactic uh, for the movie because everything just kind of snaps back into place yeah. at that point. All of a sudden, uh, Bill Pullman's character's back. You know, she's sleeping with Pete. Pete is all over. She's like, "You'll never have me." Yeah, and she walks off, and then when when he rises back up, it's, it's Bill, Bill Pullman, Pullman in the in the headlights of the car. Yeah. And then it's Bill Foley, and then Peace character is poof. Yeah. So you don't see him again the rest of the movie. And so it's that kind of weird flipping stuff going on. But I well, mean, I thought, I thought, as far as my favorite scenes, I thought the um, mystery man scenes were pretty, pretty good. Yeah, they are definitely good because he's creepy. Yeah. The, the first party scene when he's in there, there's music all around, but when he comes over to Bill Pullman, everything goes yes, down. Yes, I noticed that too. And then when he leaves, it goes back up As again. He's going up the steps and stuff. And uh, the creepy laugh, you know, over and the phone. And just even the look in his eyes are real wide. He's very. He doesn't David. blink. Oh, he doesn't blink that's at all. What it is. Yeah, he no, doesn't he blink. Doesn't. He sure and, doesn't. And uh, you're right. That, that was that was like very in his like you said his eyes are bright open. Yeah. But he doesn't blink during the whole scene. Well, that explains probably why they have like this glassy kind of. Yeah. You know, like probably just having to force me. Wow, that's really difficult. Yeah, especially for the length of time that those scenes are going. And I even did like when wow. when the uh, when the mystery man's in the cabin near the end, and he's he's like, uh, you know, I think uh, Fred says, uh, "Where is uh, does he say where is Alice?" Or the other name? No, he says Alice. Okay, and and the so mystery man's like, "There's no, there is no Alice or something." Yeah, if he, she told if she told you her name is Alice, she was lying. Yeah. And then the way he too. says those lines. Yeah, he's he, probably one of the better characters yeah. in the movie, really. Even when he's walking toward uh, Fred at the end with the, the camcorder. Yeah, he looks know. creepy as all. And, and, and Fred's running back to the car. And I was when I was watching it, I was like, 
I would be running too, even if he's yeah. walking with me near the end. Like he can't get the car started, which I didn't think they should add that part in there. But he couldn't get the car started. Uh, yeah, yeah. The car had no Build problem a, a moment ago. No, right when he you pulled know. in, yeah. there he's been running yeah. with the headlights on while you're. <laughs> Maybe his battery went dead. <laughs> yeah, right. But suddenly, but, yeah. But the mystery man was holding the camcorder, and he was walking not fast, but he was walking, and he had his hand out, and I was, I was even afraid. I was like. I jumped back a little bit. Yeah, no, I would be no. like, I would be running from this guy. No, he's definitely spooky. But creepy. although we learn um, and we've interpreted a little bit that he's actually not really a villain. He's not really a villain. He like uh, figment of uh, Bill Pullman's psyche. Yeah. But, like what was it? The uh, keeper of truths. Yeah. That we didn't have to determine. Yeah, or kind of came, it was with the video camera is kind of what it was about because as you mentioned earlier bill pullman's character in the beginning tells the cops uh i don't like video or well she tells the chart that he doesn't like yeah it. and he's because he doesn't he wants to remember the way he wants to yeah not, not the way, way it happened. actually happened and so which that shows because on the videotape is where it shows him with the body yeah and he doesn't remember anything which happens not to be no. There's no record of the actual murder, other occurring. than other than that. But it makes you wonder too. So, like, does that mean it still begs the question? Almost well, because the cops ask him if they own a video camera. Yeah. In the beginning, they're like, "No, we don't," because he doesn't like them. So, but there's obvious video evidence of this. I'm guessing because the cops watch it. Yep. You know, so we know that it's not some made up thing made up figment of his imagination because he gets arrested i'm guessing yeah it's implied based on that videotape so does that mean he was really does that mean he was recording himself well see i thought of that too you know like was that home security or something yeah right right but then i thought well if they had the home security inside then wouldn't they have it outside so they could look back to see you know, wouldn't you look back to see who's been coming in if you got security? Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. You would think. But you, know, you would think, well, with the David Lynch movie, you never it's, know. Yeah, it's definitely David Lynch, though. So what There's, about the score in the music? Uh, no, I mean, it, it in the beginning, like I said, it, it's Nothing. practically non-existent, with the exception of moments, and it's used briefly to, like, emphasize, yeah. just to kind of build up, uh, you know, like 30 seconds to a minute kind of thing. Uh, and then the second half, I mean... I, I I I didn't have any, you know. It had it had some some big songs in there. It had you know the Nine Inch Nails song, Perfect Drug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it sounded like a um, good chunk of Trent Reznor. Did he got some Trent Reznor in yeah. there? You got some Marilyn Manson. Um, yeah, I say yeah. It sounded like some Manson. Some uh, Smashing Pumpkins. So it's got a lot of those kind of uh, I guess ninety alternative grunge. Yeah, you know acts and stuff like that. Well, some of the other themes that we've heard throughout the the show a little bit, I mean, there's some good pieces of music there, but for me personally, it doesn't it doesn't take me where I thought it should. It doesn't. It's not as good as the rest of the movie. No, I don't. I don't think it's bad, but I think the score could have been better. Yeah, I do too. It's not. It doesn't stand out all that much. No, it's well, and it's not like it's not like the soundtrack and the. Score score to a movie right like pump up the volume right you know like last week uh but i mean again it has its moments yeah but uh, yeah it, it doesn't present itself uh as one of the characters no like no like you feel like a score and a soundtrack like should. infinity pool did and yes, some of these others pump up the volume and a lot yeah. of stuff even movies like uh guardians of the galaxy you know which is all old school songs yeah but you know, the, the songs themselves become, you know, character. Forrest Gump's kind yeah. of the same way yeah. with the soundtrack. Even Garden State, if you've watched that movie. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I didn't feel that, that way toward this movie. No, agreed. Um, agreed. Originality, I'd say it's very original. I thought it was pretty original, you know, because I was thinking about that. I was watching, I was like, originality. I was like, this is pretty original for like a home intruder kind of movie. Yeah. But then it's not It's not really a home intruder no. kind of movie. It's a uh, mental... I mean, it, it's a movie that you psychological, you know. Movie. If you've never seen it, it's not a movie just to put on and you know go you know do chores while you're yeah, watching. Yeah, absolutely. If you really not. want to uh, try to appreciate and enjoy the movie, and I say enjoy lightly because it's not like 
I'm not in. I enjoy watching movies. Yeah, but I'm not gonna. It, this is not like sitting down watching, you know, um, you know, Fast and the Furious Part Ten. Mm-hmm. You know, no, no, the entertainment value in this movie lies in finding a dissembolism almost yeah. in a way, like yeah. trying to piece together what's happening. And I would say, really, this movie is a movie for people that really that really enjoy the the subtext in the diving deep in the movie yeah, yeah yeah if you just want to go watch you know you know the new adam sandler movie you know unless it's a serious one because he does some pretty good serious work it's not your regular run of the mill yeah you know movie that you're going to flip on oh it's at this part let me just go ahead and watch it no if right. you've never seen it no no you're um, sure not. but it is original yeah and and you probably I don't know. Some people will turn it off unless you're really, again, if you're looking to really kind of, That's, like you mentioned, a movie earlier. that really makes you want to think about what's going on. But if you just want to veg out, not the movie, not have to think. Not. And you're right. Fifteen <laughs> minutes in, you'll cut it off. You'll cut it off if you're not. Yeah, easy, easy. Yeah. Because um, again, I may have too. Because I was just like, this is this just feels so old and low budget. And I was, oh my goodness. Yeah. It just feels older than the night. It's like we've done. We just did pump up the volume that came out in 1990 was far more new and current feeling and everything than this that came out seven years later. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? You yeah. think it would be better, but no, you know no. I mean? But it, it ended up being a good movie. I mean, I ended up enjoying it uh, by the end. Me too. Because again, the second half will suck you right in if you can make it. Do that first part and just know if you watch it after listening to this, just just ride it out. Stick it and through. That, and then that first half, uh, look for all the symbolism. Yeah. Because it, it comes back up in the second half. Even dialogue is almost verbatim. And I want to watch it again now knowing some of the things that no, I didn't yeah, know it, before. Yeah, yeah. Now, it's definitely one of those that if you want to like find the little things that filmmakers like to, you know. You just go. It's a. It's a one Pick to apart, yeah. re, revisit, rewatch. Yeah, sure. So, would you re- recommend this one? You think? Um. Yeah. Again, I'd recommend it to somebody that, if again, like we just in the last little bit yeah. here, it, but you have to want to watch a movie and like like get into the movie. And really I think so. Apart. But uh, no, I mean it's definitely worth watching it. Like, you'll enjoy it. Make it through the first 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, you're, you'll be good to go. I think so too. So that was David Lynch's Lost Highway. Lost Highway, definitely an interesting. And we one. just scratched the surface, really. Well, I mean, yeah. Well, that's what I was thinking as we were going through. We're like thirty something minutes in. And yeah. I was like, man, we are like because we we rushed the last couple questions just to give you all a condensed yeah, version to, of the show to fit it into the time frame. Yeah. Because yeah, so, you could talk about this one. This could have been a two-hour show. It it could have been. So, it could have been, but that's all right. That's yeah. all right. Yeah, we could revisit some uh, sometime down the line if we yeah, choose. Yeah, we very well may. Like, uh, yeah. Well, next week totally we worked. have the Jake Gyllenhaal movie Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler, that's going to be a good one. Yeah, I'm a, looking forward to this one. Yeah, like you I, watched this one before? I have. Okay. And again, just like with most of these movies, uh, fitting for the radio station. We're yeah, to, definitely. Um, the Vault 92.5. Exactly. So uh, please check out the um, the social medias: Facebook, Spotify, YouTube, the other people's show. In Dreams is now streaming, and like Casey said. Um, Right now, May 5th, we're going to dive into um, Real Talk and then the other people's show on 92.5. Going to the radio, the airwaves. WLSD. Yes, WLSD. Looking forward to it. And are we still... I think we had discussed the one movie uh, for that premiere show. Do we still want to do that one? I think we do. You want to <laughs> yeah. dive into that one? To uh, Natural Born Killers? Yeah. So we have, uh, we have Nightcrawler next week. And then I think the week after the does that put us at the fifth? Let's see, next week is, that, is the is that correct calendar? Is that yeah, it must be yes. Yeah. So next week is the nineteenth, so we're coming up on four twenty and then so nightcrawler and then something and then the following week. So So we'll have two shows. Are we gonna three. are we gonna try to do two shows that one week? We have two shows. we totally could still do the Wednesday and then follow it with Friday. Okay. So yeah, we might as well. So yeah, we got the Nightcrawler coming up, and then we'll uh, we'll do another film uh, on the third, and then the fifth will be our debut show on the radio on, yeah. on air, 10 p.m. 92.5. And maybe maybe between now and then, perhaps the third, because we've discussed some other podcasting possibilities options. for yeah. there. Maybe we try and segue 
I, I don't know. That's how, a good idea. I mean, into what's coming up for that. Yeah, that I think Wednesday I like that. show and then Fridays. I like it. I, I think that'll work pretty good. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. So next week, night crawler, and then we'll have to do. We'll have to fill in the 26th. Right. And then the fifth will be. Yep. Uh, natural the debut, born killers. natural born killers. That is going to be exciting. It's going to be fun. I'm so uh, stoked about it. Everyone, thanks for tuning in, Casey. Yes, enjoy good it show. as usual. Always. And Everybody uh, have a good night. See you all next time. Bye bye.